Mood to recommend the stores. Batch in one to five minutes. Oh, what happened? Huh? They want me to just move again? So they wanted me to go to Costco. And then when I get to Costco, they now want me to go to Wegmans. Yo, yo, the time is now 3.52 p.m. on a uh, Sunday. It is, what, Friday 18th? Yeah, well, not Friday 18th, <laughs> I'm on February 18th. Yeah, it's February 18th, so. It's been a little bit since I've been out here doing any kind of gig work, but I do want to try Instacart today, man. Got a little bit of time on my hands, well, sort of. There's a, a lot of videos that I actually got to get edited and posted. There's about, like, still the four shorts, and also, I've got, like, three gaming videos that I got to get uploaded, man, and there's plenty more that I want to record, but I figured, you know, I need to just get out here and get used to doing the gig works in the morning times. I didn't wake up super late. You know, I recorded the last vlog at like almost 4 a.m. And I ended up staying up an extra two hours just trying to edit things and get things prepared for today. So I ended up going to sleep around like 6.30 a.m. I woke up around, you know, 12, 12 30-ish. I got a little bit of editing done, got some videos posted, cooked breakfast, did all the good stuff. So here we are now at 4 p.m. seeing if anything pops up. I'm not too sure. I think based on Instacart, like when I last looked at the chart, it looked like things actually slowed down directly at this time of 4 p.m. You know, Sunday is the busiest day, but you know, right at 4 p.m. is when things start to die out here. So I'm not really too sure. And I'm looking on the map on it now. I don't see any kind of hot spot in my area, man. I see like a Wegmans that's like up north. But I don't think that's the only Instacart thing around here, man. So we'll see. We'll go down to that area and we'll be on the schedule for a little bit. If I don't get pinged for anything for Instacart, then I will be able to hop on an Uber Eats and then we'll just do it that way. I've got all my bags in the back. I'll use my DoorDash bags for it, so it should be fine. You know. But I'm not gonna be, if it is the, if I do Uber Eats, I'm not gonna record for the session of me like going in places, man. We'll keep it, we'll lay low for a little bit. I know literally the reason why they kicked us out of DoorDash is because we're recording. You know, all the other things about the policy, it's, it's just we're recording, right? So, I don't want to run that risk for these here. I want to be able to have some sort of gig thing that I can consistently do. Now for the dashing ones, or not dashing, but for the Instacart ones, I will be able to go in stores and record, you know, there really shouldn't be a problem there. It's mainly for some of the stores in my area in terms of, you know, recording going in the stores and then also at the customer's drop-offs. I'm not recording any kind of customer drop-offs anymore, at least like I'm not gonna have it on my head. I will just have my cam in my car just recording like a dash cam in the event that anything goes wrong. I'll have that there as well. So that should be all right. But I'm not online yet for Instacart. I think I have to hit go online in order to, to see things. Yeah, I don't know the hotspot area. I was just headed towards South Point, South Shore. I'll just hit go online. I don't think uh, anything's here though. My area might not be too popular for it. You can get batches from any store, but only stores likely to have a batch within 30 minutes are visible on the map, okay? Unlock more batches when you activate your physical card. Oh, that might be something as well. I might need to get my physical card because the one thing about Instacart is you're able to get on and start doing it. And they give you like a digital card you could use but you are supposed to have a physical card. And I think it's like the red card orders from DoorDash. In most stores, like most shopping areas, I always needed to have my red card. So that might be the case for Instacart as well. But you know, regardless, I'll go ahead and you know head down to the normal zone. Might be a little bit of traffic though, but it's Sunday, so maybe it's not as bad. But even if, again, we don't get anything for Instacart, then I can just hop on Uber Eats instead. I could sign up for Grubhub too. That one, that app's just been chilling on my phone, but I have yet to sign up for it. Sure. I suppose while I'm out and about waiting to get something for Instacart, I could pop up, you know, apply for the Grubhub one while we're out and about, man. We could do that. But by the looks of it, yeah, I don't think anything is really going crazy in my area. And it's mainly because I don't have that physical card. That's what I'm assuming. Because when I was first looking at the map and this is the way I can toggle it, like I can toggle it now. And it shows me all the stores available for it. And I'm headed into a zone between, yeah, there's like, it's, it's like five to eight stores there. There's 7-Elevens, there's Walgreens, I think that's a TJ Maxx. I think it's one of the TJ's. No, that's Target. So there's Target, 
I think they're, the wall water is part of this as well. If I zoom in here. Yeah, targeted three more. So, South Point Zone does seem to be a little bit of a hot spot for stores. Either South Point or up North Central Park. It feels kind of weird, man, going down here and, and I'm not doing it for like a DoorDash sort of, man. Because I've been doing DoorDash for so long, I was getting the routine. That's the one thing I am a little bit upset by. And I think I mentioned this already is, I was just getting to the part of DoorDash where I got over just the, the worst parts about it and the, the, you know, how boring it can be. And I was just in a roof. I was just feeling it, man. I was vibing out. So I was like, okay, you know, every day we're going to hop on and do it. It says batch or bonus offer available. Go to store arrive by 4 13 p.m. Get a batch in 15 minutes or four dollars. Huh? I don't know what this is. Batch or bonus? It says go to Costco. I don't know what this thing is. It says limited availability. Sure, I'll go. Where is this? Am I going to the right or the wrong place? Do I need to go up north? Yeah, I think I'm in the wrong area. It says, oh my God, dude, look. It says, hey, we'll navigate for you so you can keep your eyes on the road, but it didn't ask me like 50 things. I could go right through here, man. I'll go right off the balance road. One thing I forgot, even though it's only been a little bit since I've been on these roads, is I just forgot people, if they have like the slightest, well, they're not supposed to really go, but they just, they go anyways. If they, it looks like they have the slightest chance of, of making it do it. But I guess in my area, it wants me to go up north instead. This is Google. This car's a little bit weird so far, man. I've got to arrive by 4.13 p.m. Turn left onto Courthouse Road. Yeah, literally as soon as I touch down there, I'll be there. Alrighty, well, I'm here at the Costco and dude, this store is a lot larger than I thought. I've been here, well, I've been up to one in Fairfax, but it's, it's a very tight space as well, man. Not much of parking either. Goodness, we drive a slow and cautious. People walk in the middle of the street in this type of parking lot. Moods to recommended stores. Batch in one to five minutes. Oh, what happened? Huh? They want me to just move again? So they wanted me to go to Costco. And then when I get to Costco, they now want me to go to Wegmans. I mean, the Wegmans is another 10 minutes out. I'm very confused. That guy's literally driving in the middle. Of the <laughs> He's driving in the middle of the way, bro. And this is uses right Google Maps. Right. That's what it defaults to. I'm not too big of a fan of Mall Drive, at least Town this Boulevard. map system, man. I mean, it certainly is busy. I'll say that. But that was one other thing I don't like about being up north is it's just kind of tight in terms of the spacing right and everything, man. Roads. But I am overall fairly confused about instacart here man it's like it wanted me to go to costco and it said if i don't get a batch in well like 15 minutes and and then they just gave you four dollars so i'm assuming that meant the area would be busy and you would get a batch but the moment i got to costco it changed yeah the the whole thing it just disappeared the whole costco thing the step one and two and it wasn't even 4 13 because instead of you have to be there by 4 13 and I got to the Costco at 4.11. So far, my first impression of Instacart is, well, I think it's lying to me. Unless they just give me four, unless it's like automatically going in the background, but now it's just Wegmans is like they have a batch, so I'll head there. I wanna do an order mainly, man. Like, I don't wanna do any kind of this weird stuff. I wanna go in and shop and <laughs> be mobile. I don't just wanna be driving around and drive around. Oh, it's Wegmans, not Walgreens. I see the Wegmans here. It wanted me to turn up the light ahead, but you have to make a U-turn through there. A lot of these maps are notorious for that, man. When normally you're supposed to just make a left turn like earlier, and it wants you to go a little bit farther down and just make a Yui. But you're not really supposed to. But I'm here by the Wegmans. Here's the Wegmans. Oh, this parking lot is super weird. I'm actually gonna park it all the way out here. I like to be away from people, man. Pretty far from the entrance. If I get pinged for a batch, then I'll be, uh, you know, I'm right here. It says I'm in a great spot for these recommended stores. You'll see batches in the holiday area before shoppers outside of it. 
With priority access, you have a higher chance of seeing batches soon. I don't have priority access because this would be my first order here, but I do see there's like a little zone. Oh, there's other stores nearby as well, man. There's tons. Yeah, it's a crazy amount, man. There's Kohl's, there's Office Depot, there's Best Buy, PetSmart. I don't know what that V one is here, man. What is that? The Vitamin Shop. I've never heard of that. There's Five and Below. This one's Target, right? Yes, Target. Dollar Tree. There are a lot more stores. Ew, dude, the mall. Oh, yeah, the mall has like five in there as well. Yeah. So I guess Central Park is the better area for if you're going to do these types of orders. There's tons up here. There's way more up here than in South Point. Although South Point does have a handful. But I think I need my red card for or my physical one for all of them. For a lot of them. That could be why I'm not getting a batch here, man. But I think I got scammed, dude. I went to Costco, like I said, in the recommended time frame. And it just deleted that little promo thing. We'll see. We'll wait it here. Honestly, at this point, whatever batch I get, I might just accept it, even if it's a bad one. Just because I want to understand how to actually do Instacart. Because this would be my first order. I know the you know you really want to min-max it like DoorDash and base it on the dollar per mile. But then you also have to take into the, the fact the shopping time. So I do think shopping orders would pay more overall, but you know, you really got to be cautious there and understand what you're getting into. I've only been to this Wegmans once. I had like one or two DoorDash orders from here like years ago, but I, I sort of know the layout and you can always ask somebody and they'll be able to point you in the right directions. That's normally what I do when I get a shopping order, especially for DoorDash is one of the first things I would do if I really don't know the area of the store, I'd walk in, I'd find somebody at customer service or find a little kiosk and I would just ask them a general location of the items I'm looking for. You know, at least so they could push me in the right direction and I'll kind of figure out the rest of my home. So I normally ask for the aisles. I remember in one of my shorts, the lady said it tells me on the app, but it actually never told me on the app. You know, for that target, it specifically wouldn't tell me. But yeah, I'll wait it here, man. I'll wait the 15 minutes and we'll see if we get an extra $4 if that thing's still active or, you know, if it lied. But we'll see man i guess i'll just play a mobile game on my phone or something while i wait sure all righty i've got a batch for ten dollars and 33 cents it is going seven and a, like 7.3 miles man normally i wouldn't accept things like this but it is my first one and i want to get some practice here man so i'll go ahead and see if it allows me to get it cool welcome to your first instacart order appreciate it man we set up this real-time orientation session to guide you through your first shopping experience step by step. All right, this is what I'm talking about, man. So first, navigate. I'm already at the store, but I will pull up a little bit closer. You know, I was farther out in case I needed to, you know, quickly leave. But I will find a spot a bit closer to the overall entrance here. And if they gave me this batch, then I'm not going to need my physical card for it, so that's good as well. There we go. Sure, we're in. And now I got to actually shop here, so. I suppose I'll be good to put the cam in my head, man. See you in a second. Alrighty, yeah, it says, here I am. I need to start shopping. This is their 680th order, man. That is quite a bit. Don't know if I need any kind of bags or anything, but I will grab a cart here. It's only four items, so one of the small ones should suffice. I like the way these carts are. Are they sturdy? And they're pretty sturdy, man. I suppose Wegmans is like a higher quality Walmart, right? Let's start shopping here. She just added some rice. Wegmans, a fresh cut pineapple, strawberries, and grapes. I think it'd be right over there. This is where I see cut fruit. Pineapple, strawberries, and grapes. I see mango and berries. Is it this one right here? This is mango with berries. I think this is pineapple, strawberries, and grapes. Yeah, here we go. Always check the expiration date on package items to make sure there isn't any mold or damage. Produce should be ready to eat within a day or two. It looks good to me. Expiration date is 2.20. I think this is it. Asparagus. Yes. This item needs to be weighed. Find a grocery scale and try to get as close as possible to the weight. I think there's a scale right there. pounds confirm alrighty that's one down produce Wegman stew vegetables it might be over on this side here man oh oh right here man I almost passed them the 
These look pretty good here. Down on them. Let's scan it. Yep, that's two down. Meat department. Oh, this is where you need glasses, bro. I can't see them that far. I think meats would be all the way down here. I'll check this side first because it's closer. Here we go. I think this is the right spot. This might be it. I'll try to scan this one. It's an incorrect item. Huh. I don't see it, man. Dude, this is a lamb. Stew beef, chuck roast. Oh, here we go. This looks like to be it. There we go. Yes. And I need just another scale. And where are those scales when you need them? Wait, this might have the weight on it, right? Yeah, it's, it's just got it right here, man. Alrighty. Seafood. Now, where is seafood? Oh, dude, I'm randomly stumbling in the right direction, bro. <laughs> I just randomly walked into the seafood area. Nice. Shrimp cocktail tray. It's not there. That's lobster. That's crab. Oh, I think it's right here. Six count. I think it's one of these small ones here, man. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah. And it looks good to me. Is there one with a bigger lemon? Yeah, here we go. They probably like a bigger lemon with theirs. We'll take this one. The lemon's bigger. <laughs> no, not them. Cool. And then rice aroni cheddar broccoli flavor. They just added that. That's not gonna be anywhere near here. All right, we're gonna have to go exploring. 14A. Oh, it even tells me the shelf. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh my, that's all the way at the other end of the store. Here we go. If this is 14B, then 14A is right there. Nice. Bro, I love how this one gives you like the specific aisle and also the shelf as well. Although I really don't know which one is shelf seven. One, two, three. It only has five shelves. So, okay. Oh, here it is. I was about to say the problem is it wasn't, not, it wasn't seen it, but it's literally right here. Okay. Also, this is 1L. That's 2L. Oh, okay, I'm noticing now, I'm paying attention. It's shelf seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is shelf seven, man. Section L, shelf seven. I like how organized this is. This one should be it. And bam, we are good to go. Let's continue. If you check out, there are no changes to review. Next. Select credit when you pay at Wegmans. So almost all stores select credit when you pay with Instacorp and always follow instructions on the app to avoid payment declines. Got it. Each batch can have different checkout steps. Follow instructions to avoid any checkout things. Some stores don't allow self-checkout. Other codes won't scan and self-checkout in the stores that may cause delays. Got it. Codes need to be scanned at the right time. You can usually scan the order code anytime before payment, but some stores have specific requirements. Select the correct payment method. You may need to change the payment method. Display when you use your Instacart to pay. Got it. Alrighty. I don't know if they have self checkout or not. I'm not sure they have self checkout. Yo, you free? What's up, man? Got an Instacart order here. Right, uh, some paper bags. Some paper bags? Yeah. Probably need some. And I've got a code of skin as well. It's my first order here, so I'm a bit of a noob with it. All right, you got to scan the code first, or? Uh, is there, I can scan it whenever. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, All set? You as well, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Time to deliver. Cool. Alrighty, and I just checked the instructions. They'd like me to please ring the doorbell and leave the bags on the porch, just like a regular DoorDash delivery. So this is the easy part, cool. And actually, I have a thermal grub hub bag, although it's not quite tall enough here. So let me try my regular DoorDash one. Uh, this one's also not quite tall enough, yeah. <laughs> but I can just still stick it in here so it at least retains, you know, some of the coldness. A lot of these are cold items. Gotta be careful, man. The bag almost ripped there. Oh, wait, it can't close. Nice. Yeah, there we go. That should help keep things nice and cool. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and drop this bad boy off. Yo, yo, just completed the uh, first batch there. So it took us, what, about an hour's time total? Now I don't really think it was quite like an hour. It was more like 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes. Cause we, it's 5.14 now. I remember we got to the Costco at 4.14, or well, 4.12, right? And then it took us about, well, like five minutes to get from the Costco to the Wegman. So I say, and we were waiting for around for a little bit because I got the order at like 4.25, 4.30-ish. So it's now 5.14, so it's about like, yeah, about 40, 45 minutes and that's 10 bucks. So. That's less than what I normally do during a DoorDash. You guys know I like to aim for 20 an hour. So I would like a little bit more there, but I already said, you know, when first accepting the order that this one, I really wouldn't take this order normally, but since it is my first Instacart one, I was going to take it to see how it was. By far though, I love the way that the Instacart handles these shopping orders, man. Of course, the app is mainly designed for that, so it's going to be way more robust than DoorDash. You know, DoorDash is just adding stores left and right and it doesn't really give you all the information needed to really have a, an efficient shopping experience. Maybe it's just Wegmans that's very official with it because it gave me the aisle number, it gave me, bro, it gave me the aisle number, the section, and even the row on the shelves it was, it was in, man. That was pretty crazy. I was expecting all that. And I honestly think it said that for like all the items. I just never noticed it until the final item that she added just because it was like so far out of all the other places. And I will say, I got very lucky overall, man. I had no idea where any of those things were in Wegmans when I first entered, but I just happened to walk into the right side of the store where all the, the cut up fruits were right there and then right across from there, the vegetables are right there. Like I literally walked through the vegetable aisle, looked down and my item was right in front of me, man. So that was pretty lucky in itself. And then I was gonna make a left and go all the way down the store to look for the meat I was looking for, but instead I was like, you know what? I'm already on this side. Let me just try going to the right. And sure enough, it was right there on the shelf. So. I got insanely lucky during that shopping order, man. And I ended up delivering it a minute late because I wanted me to deliver it by 5, 11 p.m. I ended up delivering at 5, 12. I got to the house at 5, 11 when I pulled up, but of course you have to take a photo of it and all that. So that extended it to 5, 12. But I think because it's within my first 30 orders, they don't really count any kind of like the late things against you or any kind of like derogatory marks. But you know, after the first 30 orders, then you know, you're on the clock, man. You better make sure you have a good, otherwise they're gonna get you down for it. So that's fine. I'm headed to South Point now. I'm gonna see if I can get a South Point order. I pretty much know the stores around South Point. I've been into every single one of them. Not just for on my own, but also for like DoorDash. And that's required me to go to a lot of stores. So I am quite familiar with them. But we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It did take me a while to get that batch though, man, so. I'd say make my move next easier. Tap the store filter on the map to show only stores likely have a batch. Okay, within 30 minutes. You can still get batches for hidden stores. Oh, I gotcha. So I guess that they know if a store is likely to get a batch because some people are, I don't, I shouldn't use this word, repeat offenders. I shouldn't say that word, but they're, um, they're active members of the app, so they're going to be ordering on a consistent basis around a specific time frame all the time. So that's how they really know that, you know, the Wegmans was gonna get an order. Because once I got the order, it told me how many times that customer had ordered from Instacart, which was over 600. And I think it's gonna also tell the customer how many orders I've done. So that was my first order there. I think I did it pretty well. I mean, I made sure to keep everything into my Grubhub bag so it stayed cool and also make sure I got all the items. I checked the items to make sure they weren't bad either. They weren't spoiled or anything. Should be all right. 
Whether or not we're going to get an order here in South Point, I'm not too sure. This is the second hot spot in Fredericksburg. Central Park, where I was before, was the number one hot spot. But I think this one is number two. So we shall see if we get paid for anything here, man. What I like about Instacart so far, though, is most of the time is going to be spent in the stores. Well, assuming that you get consistent shopping orders, you know, most of the time will be spent in the stores rather than driving on the road. I don't mind driving, don't get me wrong, but with DoorDash, my biggest expense is gas. Like 10 to 15% of my overall total income from DoorDash is going to gas, and that is when I average 20 an hour. So that just goes to show just you know, how how inefficient that I can be. And my car is pretty gas efficient, man. It's an 07 Toyota Corolla. So that's just how the gas is there. But also my South Point zone, what I like about it is it tends to have a lot of orders where I have to go far out but normally the speed limit is like 50, 60 miles an hour there. So it's very fast to go in and out. You know, it'll say, oh, you got to go seven miles, but that only takes you like five minutes. So that's why I tend to like the, you know, the South Point area. But I'm here in this zone now. I suppose I'll find a place to park it. Oh, well, I'm actually going to go all the way up here, man. I know we make a, a turn there, but all the shopping centers are literally right on this little plaza here. I'm going to make this left. So like before, I'll cool it in the parking lot for, I'd say about like, what, 20 minutes? You know, so we'll cool in here for 20 minutes and if we don't get anything in 20, 30 minutes, then I'll just, let's put our head on home, man. It'd be a shame if we only made the $10 for today, $10.27. And that's how it is, that's how it is. We've got other means of income, man, so it's not the end of the world. That's the beauty behind all of this is, we have multiple streams of income right now. So it's like, what we do during these gig jobs is, it's just like an extra bonus, man. It helps speed things up. It's not really needed, but it's definitely preferred. Oh, it is Sunday, so quite a bit of these places are closed too, huh? Yeah, the pet smart looks closed, that place looks closed. This whole parking lot is empty. Sure, I'll chill in an empty parking lot, doesn't bother me none. Target's right there as well. But I am in a range of five stores, so. Like I was saying, I'm gonna cool it here. If I get paying for an order, I will hop on the cam once more. But if not, then the next time I see you guys will probably be either on my way home or when I'm wrapping things up for the day. So, see you then. Welcome back. I've got an order for McDonald's here. <laughs> bro, this order is for four bucks, bro. This is the only thing I got. I'll explain a little bit later, but let's go through this, man. And I'll go ahead and use the grub hub bag. I mean, I'm not too sure what the size of it's going to be, but the grub one... This one does have the stability that I look for. I'm assuming it's the same as like DoorDash, except different parameters. So man, picking up for Jalen C. Last three on this one is three, nine, six. All set. All right, appreciate it, man. Pretty simple. I would actually argue that picking up here the Uber Eats one is much easier than the DoorDash one. The DoorDash one, you gotta type in the last three in your app every time. Sometimes you're fumbling with it, but this one you just kinda have to verify it and then swipe when you got it. I guess they trust the, they trust the drivers more over on Uber, man. The DoorDash drivers be eating the food from McDonald's. Alrighty, let's get on to where we need to get to. Alrighty, the time is now 6.30 p.m. here and I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Instacart and Uber Eats, they're not really in my area, man. It seems like the hot app in terms of gig work is DoorDash. So, you know, Uber Eats, I was literally sitting around and barely getting any orders, man. With Instacart for a while, I was sitting around as well, but I did have the one Instacart one as y'all saw. That one was further up north for the Wegmans. Wegmans was the only hot spot the entirety of today and also want to check the apps on previous days. That was the only hotspot. And I think that's probably how it'll be in terms of the Instacart. For Uber Eats, I, <laughs> I was going through the Uber Eats app while waiting for an Instacart order. And it randomly, it just asked me to verify myself, you know, to make sure that I'm real. And the moment I verified, it just immediately made me go live. So I was like, okay, well... <laughs> They give you that verification, and the moment you get the verification done, they immediately activate go mode so you can get orders. 
But I was still sitting around for 15 minutes and, you know, I decided, okay, it's not going to be worth me just kind of sitting here. I should at least do something YouTube-wise. So I'm over home and got pinged for an order. And the order was about $4.50, which is very low. And normally during DoorDash, I would always decline these types of orders. But it was my first order for Uber Eats. So I was like, okay, well, it's, it's my first order. So maybe it'll do something. Like maybe it'll increase my stats and I can get more. So I took it. You guys saw handled it fine. McDonald's, same McDonald's I've always been to during DoorDash. And it was pretty easy. And after I dropped it off, I didn't have my camo when I dropped it off. And, you know, I, I stopped doing that. But I made sure to hand him the order. And I don't know what really went wrong in terms of there, like afterwards or something. But when I looked in the app, I only made $2.25 for that entire order. So I don't know if the customer had added a tip, then it removed it later, or, you know, one thing Uber said is they estimate the order would give me $4.50, and that was them estimating that the customer would tip, but the customer ended up never doing so. I believe that's how it went. Regardless, the base pay from, from Uber Eats there would be the same as DoorDash, which is like that $2.25 there. So it's definitely not worth it at all, man. It's not worth it time-wise, not worth it gas-wise. And for Instacart, I'm feeling the same. But at the same time, I'm also thinking maybe this is just a bad time to hop on. So I do want to try it again, like another day, and probably be more up north rather than South Point area. I think the South Point area might just be bad for it. So I will try it another time up north. But at the same time, I think the real solution here is, you know, gig work's just not going to cut it. I mean, when I'm in the Philippines... I'm not going to be doing gig work down there because it's not going to be worth it regardless. Everything's going to be YouTube based. So I'm thinking this is a sign that it's time for me to start taking YouTube just as serious as I first did before. And what I would do is I would have my regular videos. I would have some sort of idea. I would plan it out. I would record that idea. And after getting that one posted, I would figure out how to turn it into a shorts video and get that one posted as well. So even if the regular video would only get like a thousand views on it, I would form it into a shorts video that would go viral so it would get like a hundred thousand views on it and now you can link the two together so the if it gets a thousand views on a regular video you'll make like a dollar but on the shorts video if it gets a hundred thousand views you'll make like you know 10 to 20 bucks which still isn't much but it brings a lot of attention back to that main video so it'll push it from a thousand views to like ten thousand views so you can get another 10 to 20 bucks from that one you're getting 10 to 20 bucks from the shorts one so you know around 40 in total that's pretty much how I would min-max it in terms of YouTube. And as time would go on, you would get more and more views. So instead of getting like averaging 1,000 views on your video, you said averaging 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. And instead of averaging 100,000 video of views on the shorts, 200,000, 300,000, a million, depending on what sort of, what niche you're in and how much of a dominance figure that you have there. That's pretty much how I do YouTube. At least that's how I did it in the past. I was doing, I was putting my time half DoorDash and half kind of with the YouTube vlog and stuff going on. Well, a lot of it was mainly going to DoorDash and gig work, you know, in the recent month and a half. So I just swing things back into the YouTube side of things. It'll take me a little bit to, you know, get back in the, you know, in the swing of things and get things back on schedule because it has been a minute. And it might take me a little bit longer to touch down to the Philippines since it's going to, I'll have to be patient before I can get all my equipment and things together. But regardless, you know, taking things day by day, you know, take them one day at a time. And also, the cool thing about YouTube is you never know. You really never know how many views one of your videos is going to get. And you never know how far they can actually take you. So that is one of the things I like there. As you can tell, I'm a bit disappointed. You know, I was going into these apps expecting, okay, well, maybe the orders might not be as quality because I don't have any status, but at least I would get some orders. So barely getting any ones. It was just like... Like, okay. <laughs> and this is like an okay dude type of moment, you know what I mean? So, I've got more videos to get scheduled here and posted. I'm going to get at that. Nothing really much more to say here. Oh, in terms of doing the vlogs real quick. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle these. Because most of the content really was when I was doing this gig work. Since I'm not really getting too many orders there and I'm not doing too much around there. For the most part, I'll just record myself going to the gym like usual. I suppose when I go shopping, I can bring little Cam in with me, but I'm still half and half on all that. 
I'll need a little camera stand. And then anytime I have to go out and about, I can I can have the camera. But I don't even know, man. Yeah, I'll give it more thought. But for the most part, the vlogs just might be me, you know, coming out of the gym, telling y'all what I've got planned and getting at that. I will be streaming pretty much every day at this point now. That'll be the best way for me to get some more YouTube content out there. At least the most efficient way, man. It's fun. It's easy to do. I've been doing it for a while, so we'll just get straight into it. But that'll be that. Like always, man, I appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of this one. And I will catch you guys when I catch you guys. Y'all take care and peace out, man.